Welcome back. I knew you'd come back. All right, so in this video, we're going to dive into the if-else statement. Maybe a few more things. We'll see how it goes. So in this video, we'll talk about the if-else and what that's known as the dual alternative decision structure. So previous, we talked about a single... Let's go way back. Do, do, do. All right, we, called a, we talked about the single alternative decision structure. Now we're going to talk about the dual alternative structure. So with that being said, we have now with the dual alternative is two possible paths of execution. One is taken if the condition is true, and then the other if the condition is false. When either of these conditions are done, it will go back to the standard code line. But again, either this set of code is going to run or this set of code is going to run. So that's why it's important. It's, it is slightly different than the single because um, where this was going to run or not and then always go back to the standard code, if this doesn't run, then this will run. If this doesn't run, this will run and then go back to the code and vice versa. So let's erase some of this. As you can tell, I probably should tell you I like to draw. All right. So with this, we have the simple statement like we had before, if and then the condition. And the difference here is we got one tab here. We have removed the one tab here. So I just wanted to show you that. But, but again, you'll see that the if and else are on the same line tab-wise. And the conditional statements, both under the condition and the else, are on their own tab. So they are one tab in. And so with that, we also then type out the word else. Then we tab in and give the other condition statement. Statements must be consistently independent, indented. And this is what we're talking about with the, uh, you know, the if and else is on one tab line and then the uh, conditions are one tab in, but aligned. When we draw it out, here's our question. So we're saying, hey, is the temperature greater than 40? And remember, this is exclusionary. So if it were 40, if the temperature was 40, this would be false. So if it is false, then we're going to display to the user nice weather we're having. If it's true, we're going to say, hey, a little cold, isn't it? So if the temperature is less than 40, we would display because that would say, hey, and again, let's back it up. Is the temperature less than 40? Yes, then that's true. Display a little cold, isn't it? If it's false, because it's not true, then we would do that. But as you can see, both of these come back to this one code line. So it goes back to our original code line. So in this, this example, we're talking, if the condition is true, then this code block right here is going to be um, executed. If it's not true, then this code block will be executed. Same over here. If it is true, this block. If it's false, if it's uh, false, then, oh, look at that. Nice, that's what I did. Now we got pins all messed up. Looks like four is the right number. Okay, there we go. <laughs> nice. So as I was saying, before my pen went all wacky, if it's not true, then we're going to do the else. Okay, so... Now that we've done a lot of these numbers, like 40, that's great. But a lot of times, we're going to compare strings. One of the more common ways 
is when we ask user for input, hey, do you want to do this? And they type Y for yes, or sometimes we even want them to type the full word yes. Right? So we can compare strings using our standard comparisons. We can also do greater than, less than, greater than, um, or equals to, and less than and equals to. When we do the greater than, less than, greater than, less than, or equals to, excuse me, greater than, less than, and greater than, equals to, less than or equals to, what's going to happen is it's going to change the characters into their Sasky values. If the, if the shorter word is a substring of the longer word, the longer word is greater than the shorter word. So in other words, if I say compare this because this has got the very first same letter, this is known as a substring of this word because it's just this letter. So this is a substring of this word. Now that I've drawn all over it, let's see if I can remove some of this. All right, so back to what we we're talking about. So because Y is a substring, the longer word is greater than the shorter word. So is Y, which is the shorter word, greater than the longer word? No, this would be false. Because this is always going to be greater than the smaller string. Now, if you're comparing something very similar, such as lowercase y is greater than uppercase y, then this is going to be changed into its Asaski value. It's going to be turned into a number based on the Asaski value. And so is this, and it's going to compare the Asaski values. And the Asaski value for lowercase y and uppercase y are not the same. So it's going to return back whether the lowercase y Sasky value is greater than the y Sasky value. Here's a good example. So in this, m is turned into 77, and that's 77, and this is 97. So, so far, we're doing good, and 114, 114, but lowercase y is different than lowercase k. So lowercase y equals 121, and um, lowercase k equals 107, a Sasky value. So with that being said, this word will be greater than this word. Because this value at the end is greater. I will tell you, seldomly do we compare strings that way. Oftentimes when we're comparing strings, we're looking to see if something is equal. Right? So most of the time we're doing this or we're checking to see if something is not equal. We don't typically use these all that often, but you can. Now we talked a little bit about nested decision structures and the if, else, if, else statement. So a, a decision structure can be nested inside another decision structure. And it is commonly needed within programs. So let's determine if someone qualifies for a loan, they must meet two conditions. They must earn at least 30,000. So salary must be greater than or equal to 30,000 and must have been employed for at least two years at least to at least two years so not um in this case when we read this for at least at least stands for um uh inclusive as well so um length of employment must be 
greater than or equal to two years. We're going to first check the first condition. And if it's true, then we'll check the second condition. If it's not true, we don't need to check the second condition. We can go ahead and break out and, and go on with the code. So here's what that looks like. So first we're going to check and we're going to say, hey, is the salary greater than or equal to 30000 No. So we don't need to go any further. We can go ahead and just say, you must earn, uh, earn at least 30000 per year to qualify and go back to the um, normal set of code. However, if it is true, then we'll go on to ask the next question. Were they on the job for at least two years? And as you can see, both of these are inclusive operators. If this is true, then we would say, hey, you qualify for the loan. But if it's false, we would go and say display. You must have been on your current job for at least two years and then return back. Now, again, if it's true, the first condition and the second condition, we would do this and then also return back to the code. It's important to use proper indentation in a nested decision structure. Important for Python interpreter. So when we're doing this nested if, it's really important to say if salary is greater than 30,000, then we're going to do our tab and we're going to say if years on job, of course I'm running out of room, is greater than or equal to, then we would do two tabs and we would do this bit of code here, one tab and say else, and then put this code two tabs in this code here and then back out because now we're going to worry about the this one single the first if so we're going to do um actually sorry we're going to go back to no tabs because we want to say else Then we need one tab and we would put this code here. The important thing to understand here is we've got this else if is at tab level one, which in this case is none, no tab. And this is elf is at tab two. But also, the code here is going to also be at tab two because it falls under this else by one tab. So all of this falls under this if, all of this falls under this else. But we also then have this set of code falling under this uh, if, and this set of code falling under this else. So now we have a third tab level. It also makes your code more readable by other programmers, possibly by you as well. So rules for writing nested if statements is else clause should align with matching ifs. Statement in each block should be consistently indented. So one more time, I'm gonna show it here. If number one, and then we're going to say if, number two, and by the way, I'm writing pseudocode here. Then 
We're going to tab in again and do some code. Else. Do some code. And then we're done with this code. So now we have to go back and say else and do some more code. So this aligns and this aligns. Now the interesting thing is a lot of single nested, and this is a single nested because there's only one nested if within this if, can be written as an if else if else statement. So we're saying if condition one is true, do this statement. However, if condition two is true, do this statement. And if condition number three is true, do this statement. And if none of those conditions are true, if none of them are true, then just do basically what's known as kind of a default, or in this case, an else. So else means if none of these work out, then just do this clause. We want to make sure that we align the used uh, alignment used with the if else if, if <laughs> let me try this again alignment used with if else if else statements the if else if and else clauses are all aligned so as you can see all of these are aligned And each one of our statements is one tab under its respective condition, uh, the, the, the uh, condition check. If the else if else statement is never required, uh, so it is, it's never required, but logic is easier to follow. And it can be accomplished by using an if-else statement that's nested. However, the code can become complex and indentation can cause problematic long lines. Not to mention, as we come up here and look at all this mess, right, the indentations of nested if statements uh, can get pretty messy pretty quickly. Here is a complicated if-else if statement. And it looks very similar, by the way, to a nested if. Uh, well, it looks very, this one looks very similar to a complex nested if statement. But the case here is that, again, we're checking something. If it's false, then we're checking something else. If that's false, we're going to continue to keep checking until finally we just say, hey, there's no other option. Go ahead and do this. All right, we're going to stop there, and when we come back, we are going to talk about logical uh, operators and, uh, and get into ands and ors. Plus, we'll talk a little bit about knots. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.